Hello Makers, a Happy New Year to all of you. I hope you're having an amazing day today. A question I get asked a lot is what kind of power supply do I need or battery pack do I need? Well, it's all a question of how much current your project consumes. This tutorial will explain to how to measure it and how to calculate what power supply or battery pack you need. So hang on, I'll be right back. A lot of beginner makers are not really aware why you need to measure the current that your project draws or how to do this. Well, your luck, this tutorial will explain both of these issues. Before we go any further, as usual, there is a blog attached to this video and you can find the link to the blog in the description below. Tutorial overview. We're going to look at what materials you need, we're going to look at how to measure the current consumption of your project and we're going to see why do you need it. So let's jump into it. So let's see what materials we're going to need for this exercise. So the first thing we're going to need is an Arduino Uno. That's my go-to board for like doing tests and experiments uh, because it's easy to use. Then the next thing we're going to need is a multimeter. This thing here. If you notice it has three ports. Some multimeters like this one over here have four ports. It doesn't matter, but your multimeter needs to be able to remove the, the probes and you need to have these ports to plug them in. The next thing you're going to need is, of course, the probes themselves. These are banana clip probes and it will become clear in a sec and red and black. So, fairly simple. You're going to need a, a power supply, a wall power supply. This is a 5 volt, 2 amp power supply. And I have this cool little adapter you can buy at almost anywhere that I can plug onto my power supply. And it has two leads on there that will go to the Arduino, a red lead and a black lead. The red lead gets a 5 volt plus and the black lead is minus ground. Uh, and then you're going to need one extra jumper wire and that will become clear. So this list is in my blog, you can find it in the description below, the link to it. And uh, it has some more information in there, but there you go. So let's start the experiment. Let's set up the experiment. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply power to the Arduino Uno. The Uno has a fault in and ground over here. So you can actually, instead of plugging your power supply directly into this power jack, you can actually go through here. And that's what we use this for. Uh, before I put power to this, I always like to plug it in so that you don't have leads flopping around that can touch and create a short. The next step, we're going to apply power to the unit, just to let, show you that it actually works. You see that the power light comes on and that the LED is blinking because I put the blink sketch in it. Now, the next step, what we're going to do is put this multimeter into the loop. How we do that, like, let's take the power off for a sec. Take the black lead, goes into the common ground. The red lead goes to the amps. I always choose the highest one, just to make sure that by accident I don't burn out my multimeter or damage stuff. This multimeter is up to 10 amps max. So um, you notice that there is a milliamp here but that one is only fused to 250 milliamps. Uh, a project, a lot of my project go way above that and that would blow that fuse in your multimeter. So when you buy a multimeter make sure that it's fused and that it's easy to replace the fuses because in the beginning you might blow some. 
Just saying. So now, what we're doing is we plug in this adapter back into ground. This red lead from power goes to the red lead from your 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 multimeter and you take this red lead or jumper wire plug it into your Arduino Uno and plug it into the black lead of your power adapter if you notice I'm trying to make the the metal that is showing as small as possible so that they can't by accident touch and create a short so you can see over here the black goes to here the red goes to the red lead in your on your multimeter and the black lead from your multimeter goes to the fold in and then the ground goes back to the common ground on this thing here and now if I plug in the power what's happening is the power goes first through the multimeter and then into the board we call that that we put the multimeter in series with the power supply or sometimes called in line so we want to measure the amperage or the current so we put it on amp because this is a auto sensing multimeter what it does it always goes first to alternate current and it does not sense that it's not and it has a function button for that so yours might do the same the moment I press the function button now it's reading direct current you see how much current this project is drawing uh, just to give you an idea before the decimal point it is one amp this is one milliamp so in total it's 32 milliamps of current that this project is drawing now you know how to measure the current draw of your project we're going to look at why do you need it well that's very simple most people understand that a power supply provides a certain voltage but it also has an amperage rating and how much current it can supply the reason for that is that if your project requires a certain amount of current you need to buy the appropriate power supply if you use one that's underpowered the power supply will have a way shorter lifetime and you get a chance that it actually will fail and cause a fire so if you have a project that draws like close to one amp and you buy a one amp power supply you are setting yourself up for failure the other reason is that you don't need to buy a three to five amp power supply if your project only uses less than an amp a one amp power supply can be as cheap as five to seven dollars whereas a three to five amp power supply can be a lot more pricey like fifteen to thirty dollars so you can save some money that way another really important reason is that you're going to use your project somewhere where there's no electricity and you're going to need to use a battery pack so how do you know how long the battery pack is going to last with your project well battery packs are rated in milliamp hours or amp hours so that gives us something to work with now a simple calculation is where you divide the capacity in milliamp hours by the power consumption the current consumption I always switch those up the current consumption of your project so for me I have a power supply which is like 16,750 milliamps and um, my project only draws 32 milliamps so after calculation divide the 16,750 by 32 it gives me how many hours 
my project will run on it. A big caution for this. This is only a ballpark figure. This is nowhere precise. It has a lot to do with environmental factors like temperature, the quality of your battery pack and all these kind of things. A lot of battery packs have issues that they actually, when they get close to being discharged, start to discharge way quicker or have a voltage drop where it actually doesn't supply 5 volt anymore and now your project suddenly stops working. So again, this is only a guideline. If you Google, you can find way more uh, effective calculations. This just gives you a rough estimate. And you can run the project and see how long it really lasts. But you're not off by days, you're off by hours, 10, 15 hours, almost a day. So there you go. Now you know how much current your project draws and how to calculate what power supply or battery pack you're going to need. If you like this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by pressing the subscribe button or the bell so that you also get notifications when I post new videos or like my Facebook page. The link to my Facebook page is in the description or uh, subscribe to my blog which you can do at the bottom of the blog. Again, the link to the blog is in the description. Have an amazing day. Hope to see you soon. Bye for now.